a chapter uh, which is uh, titled uh, um, Pure Devotional Service, Change in, Change in Heart. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Cheva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Udhiraya Ashta Prayeshva Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttam Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Nama Om Vishnupadaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shumati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tenamene Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nirvishesha Shunavadi Pashatadi Shikarane Mukham Karuti Vacharam Pangalangati Grim Yatkrapata Maham Vande Shri Guru Devitaran Parmananda Mahanamo. So before uh, uh, starting with the uh, descriptive disc discussion on the third chapter, uh, so I'll just take a few minutes to kind of step back and see the flow of, uh, uh, of where we are and how we got here and where does the third chapter take us. So um, interesting thing to note in this chapter is that uh, the title of the chapter is Pure Devotional Service. And one would expect Sukadeva Goswami to speak about uh, bhakti in the chapter. But actually, there are only three verses in the chapter that talk about bhakti. Verses 9, 10, and 11. The rest of the verses, they talk about Panchopasana, which is, which is demigod worship. And... Uh, a strong, and there is a whole set of verses spoken by Shonakarishi, which is a condemnation of materialistic desires, translating to demigod worship. So the chapter kind of plays an interesting role that it does not speak so much about bhakti as opposed to wanting to distill bhakti. So what it wants to do is to separate, just like one separates the pearl from the ocean. So uh, there will be more descriptions about bhakti later on. But at this point, Sukadeva Goswami kind of wants to establish the, the platform of bhakti as distinctly separate from everything else, which is why we will see the the, cha the chapter constructed as it is. Uh, so Srila Prabhupada actually gives uh, in, the, in the 24th verse of this chapter, towards the very end of the chapter, he actually gives in the purport uh, a, a summary of the flow. So, and I just kind of uh, wanted to read it earlier on so that one gets a sense of, uh, a sense of how we got here. So Prabhupada says that we should note with profit that in the first three chapters of the second canto, a gradual process of development of devotional service is being presented. So in the first chapter, the first step in devotional service, which is hearing and chanting, is stressed. And so I'm not reading word to word at this time, I'm paraphrasing. So the first chapter, but this is essentially from Prabhupada's purport. <clears throat> so the first chapter, it talks about the uh, what one should do if one desires perfection. And so there goes Swami answers by saying that one should hear and chant about Krishna. <clears throat> but understanding that not everyone can do it, he goes on to talk about the Virat Hoof which is essentially uh, the first step for materialists 
who are aspiring to be spiritualist, seeing spirit in, in, in matter, which will gradually help to spiritualize one's, uh, one's senses. In the second chapter, the focus now turns to the Lord in the heart, which is the, which is the super soul. And uh, uh, two kinds of yogis are described. Those who desire instant liberation and those who desire gradual liberation by traveling through the various planets in the material universe. And then the chapter ends with a strong introduction to bhakti. And then the third chapter begins with panchopasana. Shira Prabhupada says the system of Panchopasana recommending the five mental attitudes for the common man is also enacted for this purpose, namely gradual development, worship of the superior, that may be in the form of fire, electricity, the sun, the mass of living beings, Lord Shiva, and the impersonal super soul, partial representation of Lord. Vishnu. <clears throat> so uh, all this is presented, but in the context of all this, the superiority of direct worship to Lord Vishnu is glorified. So if we were to take one more step back, then we see that at the end of the first canto, Parishad Maharaj had asked that what is the duty of a man about to die? And there was controversy amongst the sages as to the answer to this question when Sukadev Goswami arrived. So uh, when Sukadev Goswami arrived, he glorified the question because this is not a typical question that is asked by a person about to die. The typical question would be that how can I live longer? Or what can I do to make sure that I have a better birth? But Parishad Maharaj is asking, this, my duty in this particular life, in the time that I have, that I have uh, uh, left. So the first thing that Sukhudev Goswami did was to encourage Parikshit Maharaj that don't worry if you have seven days to live. He gave the example of Maharaj Khatvanga and on the flip side, he gave the example of where a long life is, is useless, like, like trees that live for a long time, but do not make any spiritual inquiry. So the point he is making is, it's not how much time you have left that counts, but how you use the time. In the subsequent chapter, Sukhdev Goswami, he pushes Parishad Maharaj more towards the spiritual aspect. So by glorifying the worship of the super soul, he uh, implicitly discourages involvement in material life. Why? Because the super soul worship is based on astang yoga. Astang yoga is based on strong renunciation. The prerequisite to astang yoga is gyan yoga. Gyan yoga is based on very strong sense control. So by directing Parishad Maharaj towards yoga, uh, Sukhdev Goswami is also implicitly directing him away from the, from the, from the material world. And if you remember in the second chapter, in verses 15 to 21, he spoke about, speaks about the yogi who quickly breaks the connection and goes back. And 22 to 31, he talks about the yogi who travels through through, through, uh, uh, through different planets. And then 
he concludes with a very powerful with a with, with a very powerful message that uh, when one is dying then one doesn't really care about superfluous things one cares about what is essentially important so uh, uh, in 36 which is the second last verse he he says that it is essential that every human being should hear about glorify and remember the supreme lord always and everywhere and he spoke we, we discussed quite a bit about this and he ends the chapter <coughs> excuse me and then and then he ends the chapter with the uh, um with the glorification of the process of bhakti that through oral reception that is filled with the nectarian message of lord krishna and his beloved devotees or the beloved of his devotees one can purify the polluted aim of life known as material enjoyment and go back to and then go back to um, godhead so in chapter three what we will see is that uh, Sukhdev Goswami, he first answers this implicit question. It's not a question that is explicitly answer, asked, but he answers this implicit question that you're continuously directing me towards devotional service, but what if I don't have that desire? What if I'm still attached to material prosperity? So, and this is a very valid question because painting everybody with the same brush, regardless of the propensities, regardless of their, their specific situation, it's an immature way. Sometimes in preaching, we, we ourselves notice that we have all had experiences with devotees. We've been, we have preached and we've been preached to. So we have experiences with devotees who will just come and say, Prabhu, there is nothing else in life. Just chant Hare Krishna. Everything will be there. Don't worry. Fully surrender. And regardless of where you are, regardless of where they are, they present a stage that is incompatible. And it, the effect that it has is that it hardens your heart. So when somebody presents a destination that you know, that you do not have uh, either attraction for, or that is not within your grasp, then it hardens your heart. You say that I need to find some other path. When you see mature devotees preaching, then they first ascertain the level of who of the person they are preaching to, and they preach accordingly. That's what we see in the Vedas. That what that's what we see in Srimad Bhagavatam, and that's what we will see in the third chapter. That Sukadev Goswami, he will answer this implicit question that if you have material desires, then worship the demigods. And then he establishes a, a, he establishes a fairly um, descriptive cross-reference. If you have this desire, establish, worship this demigod, this de desire, uh, worship this demigod. So that when a person is reading it, then he says, okay, there's something for me to, to, to anchor my, my faith in. I do desire impersonal liberation, so let me worship Lord Brahma. But he doesn't leave it at that, because that would be, misleading so he takes it one step further and he he uh, he frankly reveals that this is important this is inferior there is a superior path and through the agency of uh, shaunakar rishi he more elaborately describes about how inferior this this process uh, is um Let me see what else is there. Uh, okay, so that's the general. So that's the general outline of the chapter and uh, the flow in terms of where we came. We'll start with the two, three, one. The first, first verse. Shri Sukha Vacha 
Shri Sukadev Goswami said, Maharaj Parikshit, as you have inquired from me as to the duty of the intelligent man who is on the threshold of death, so I have answered you. So this verse, it seems to include indicate that Sukhdev Goswami is concluding the conversation with Parishit Maharaj. Parishit Maharaj asked him a question and Sukhdev Goswami answered. He asked him the question that what is the duty? And Parishit Maharaj answered that the duty is to worship Krishna. He asked him how? And he said through the process of Shavan and Kirtan. So, reading this verse, one might think that the conversation has ended, or he is waiting for Parishit Maharaj to ask more questions. But as we will see in the next verse, that Sukhdev Goswami will continue to speak. And uh, he speaks on, on what is called a non sequitur meaning that it seems to be not fitting the, the flow that has been previously established. So if, so if you remember at the end of the second chapter, Sukhdev Goswami had glorified the process of bhakti and the destination of bhakti. So you would expect him to talk more about it, but he does not. He speaks about a completely different topic, which is demigod worship. So the reason that he is doing it is that he is answering an unasked question, but an implicit question. That what if one only desires material prosperity and not spiritual gain? Or what if one desires for material prosperity are much stronger than one's desire for spiritual advancement. Because you can understand that if somebody is at this stage, there is some desire for spiritual advancement. Why will they read the Bhagavad Gita? But, but it's also highly, highly possible that that desire is very minuscule compared to the desires for material advancement. So while Parishan Maharaj does not ask this question explicitly, Sukhdev Goswami as a preacher, as a, as a consummate preacher, he does not want to exclude this category of people. So, so after having taken Pariksha Maharaj to a path of perfection, he is now going to talk about the detours to the path. But ultimately, as we will see, what Sukhdev Goswami will explain that that the results of worshipping the demigods are insignificant and the senses, unless they are employed in devotional service, are useless. So in this verse, we will see that Sukadev Goswami, he glorifies Parishad Maharaj as Manushyeshu Manishana or intelligent amongst men. And the reason he is doing it is that he is asking the right question. Duty of a man about to die. And he is also receptive to the higher truth. But by using this phrase, Sukhdev Goswami, he is also indicating that there are people who are not Manishyeshu, Manishana. And now I am going to talk about them. So in the purport, Shri Prabhupada says that not all human beings are intelligent. So the importance of human life is not always understood. Therefore, Manishana means thoughtful, is particularly used here. A Manishana person, like Parishit Maharaj, must therefore take to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna and fully engage himself in devotional service, hearing, chanting, etc. of the holy names and pastimes of the Lord, which are Hari Kathamrata. This action is especially recommended when one is preparing for death. 
in uh, Shri Prabhupada in the purport, he talks about four important steps that one should do after having blessed with the human form of life. So first he says is that one may inquire about his spirit self, which is the basis. Second is consult the bona fide scriptures. Third is take shelter of the spiritual master. And the fourth is fully engage in devotional service to Lord Krishna. And there is, of course, a sequence to it. That one with the human form of life begins to realize that form of life by Brahma Jigyasa. That one begins to inquire. And then the inquiry becomes fruitful when it is properly directed. So many people have inquiry for thing that is beyond material, but they don't inquire from a proper source. They may speculate themselves, or they may inquire from they may inquire from different speculators. So that's why Prabhupada says that bona fide scriptures. But then the bona fide scriptures are just rule books. In order to properly understand them, and most importantly, translate the translate the injunctions into practice. The third part is the third step is given that one takes shelter of the spiritual master. The result of this, the result of Brahma Jigyasa, the result of uh, Shastra Vigyan, the result of Guru Padashraya is, is Sadhana Vaidhi Bhakti. That then one engages in the devotional service to Krishna. So this, as per Srila Prabhupada, is what one who has the human form of life is obligated to do to, to pay the debt of getting a human form of life. Okay, next verse. So next set of verses are actually six verses that Prabhupada combines together. Brahma Varchas Kamas to Jeta Brahmana Patim Indram Indriya Kamas to Prajakama Prajapatim Devim Mayam to Shri Kamas Tejas Kama Vibhavasum Masukama Vasun Rudran Virikama Taviryavan Anadya Kamas Padditam Swarga Kama Dita Sutan Vishwan Devan Rajakama Sadhyan Sam Sadako Visham Ayush Kama Svenao Deva Pushti Kama Elam Yajet Pratishta Kama Purusho Rudashi Lokamatrao Rupa Bikama Gandharvan Sri Kama Apsara Urvashim Adipat Kama Sarvesha Yajeta Parmesti Rajeta Parmati Stinam Yagyam Yajed Yashas Kama Kosha Kama Prachetasham Vidikamas Tugiri Sama Dama Patyar Tomam Satim One who desires to be absorbed in the impersonal Brahma Jyoti of Arjans should worship the, the master of the Vedas, which can either refer to Lord Brahma or Braspati, the learned priest. One who desires powerful sex should worship the heavenly king, Indra. One who desires good progeny should worship the great progenitors called the Prajapatis. One who desires good fortune should worship Durga Devi, the superintendent of the material world. One desiring to be very powerful should worship fire. And one who aspires only after money should worship the Vashus. One should worship the Rudra incarnations of Lord Shiva if he wants to be a great hero. One who wants a large stock of grains should worship Aditi. One who desires to attain the heavenly planets should worship the sons of Aditi. One who desires a worldly kingdom should worship Vishwadev. And one who wants to be popular with the general mass of population should worship the Demigod. One who desires a long span of life should worship the demigods known as Ashwini Kumars. 
and a person designing a strongly built body should worship the earth. One who desires stability in his post should worship the horizon and the earth combined. One who desires to be beautiful should worship the beautiful residence of the Gandhar planet. And one who desires a good wife should worship the Apsaras and the Urvashi, society girls of the heavenly kingdom. One who desires domination over others should worship Lord Brahma, the head of the universe. One who desires tangible faith should worship the personality of Godhead. And one who desires a good bank balance should worship the demigod Varun. If one desires to be greatly learned man, he should worship Lord Shiva. And if one desires a good marital relation, he should worship the chaste goddess Uma, the wife of Lord Shiva. So uh, <clears throat> these are, of course, a sample of the of the of the desires that various people have, whether it is material prosperity, marriage, beautiful wife, bank account, long life, health, and uh, uh, Sukhdev Goswami is mentioning the the devas who can award award it. So one thing common that you will see in all these is that all that one gets in this is temporary. Even the even the impersonal Brahma Jyoti that starts what they're all temporary. And some of them are more temporary than others. Like one may one may one may have a strong body, but then it's known that when one grows old then the body becomes weak. So one who is worshipping for a strong body is worshipping for how many years? For uh, Is worshipping for a fruit that will last how many years? Maybe 20 years, 30 years at the most. Similarly, one is worshipping for strong sexual desire, very strong, very small duration of, of, uh, uh, of time. Um, so in this set of verses, essentially, the whole Karam Khan section of the Vedas is collapsed. Because uh, Sukadeva Goswami is just giving a very, very high level. Now, behind each of this worship, there are very, very elaborate processes. What is the process of worshipping the Vishwadevas? What is the purpose? What is the process of worshipping Durga Devi? What are the prayers that you recite? What are the rituals that you follow? So, very, very elaborate processes. And understandably, understandably so, because the process is is uh, is, is difficult. Um, the reason again um, he's putting it over here is to allow people who have strong material desires um, to continue to have faith in the Bhagavad Gita, and to, and to not because the. Uh, the implicit understanding is that the message of the Bhagavatam is so pure that simply by simply by 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 nityam bhagavat sevaya, simply by hearing it, one gets purified. So if one was to simply bail out of the Bhagavatam without listening to the Bhagavatam, then they will not be able to avail of themselves this purificatory aspect. Another point that is made by Srila Prabhupada is that uh, uh, he says that um, through, 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 and this is a general explanation of the Karamkhand of the Vedas, and specifically in this verse, that people are being trained to surrender to fulfill their desires. Because the focus over here is, in order to do this, you worship this demigod. So when you're worshiping somebody, then there is that automatic sense of subservience. So you are at a higher platform, and I surrender unto you, even for material desires. But it is essentially building up your surrendered muscles. The second thing that it is also doing is that it is building your faith in the scriptures. 
because as you follow the process and the promised results are delivered, then one develops faith in the scriptures. So in the previous purport, Srila Prabhupada had said that right after the after the uh, Brahmaji Gyasa, uh, the, the second step is to inquire from a bona fide uh, scripture. So uh, the, the even though a large part of the Vedas do not talk about spiritual advancement directly, but they still have this ability to one have to generate faith in the scriptures. Because the same faith will then be very useful when it is transposed to the more uh, the more uh, purest, the more spiritual aspect of the of the of the Vedas. So Prabhupada says that those who do not who are not able to surrender, then uh, they are they are essentially they are essentially living in this conception that. Uh, I am, I am the doer and I am the enjoyer. So a close cousin of this conception, I am the doer and I am the enjoyer, is that I make the rules for myself. Which means that the whimsical mentality, that I don't care what anybody else thinks, I don't care what the scriptures say, I, 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 I live as I, as I, as I please. So these kind of people are described by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita as being in the mode of, as in the mode of having strong. So this is 3:37. Like Krishna says, it is lust only, Arjun, which is born of the contact of the mode of passion and later transformed in the wrath, and it is the all-devouring enemy of the, of the, of the world. So in the purport, Shri Prabhupada mentions that Parishit Maharaj has been addressed by the Goswami as the Manasi or the man of highly developed mind. Because at the time of death, he left all material enjoyment and completely surrendered unto the lotus feet of the Lord by hearing his message from the right person, Sukhdev Goswami. But aspirations for material enjoyment by endeavoring persons are condemned. Such aspirations are somewhat like intoxicants of the degraded human society. Intelligent person should avoid these aspirations and instead seek the seek the permanent life. So Prabhupada is giving us summary of going forward. At this point, he is not condemning it, but he will condemn it. He will condemn it later on. Um, So, so Prabhupada has given quite a few lectures. He has quoted this verse in quite a few lectures. So I just wanted to share two excerpts from, from his lectures. One of his lectures, he says that, so these jnanis, they are desiring to merge into the Brahman effulgence. Therefore, it is called Brahma Varchas Kamastu. And Kama means desire. Therefore, they are still desire. So that is the contamination in one who is, who is, who is looking for impersonal liberation. Now these are not the Mayavadis; these are the Brahmavadis. But even the Brahmavadis, they are Brahmavarchas Kamas too, that they still have this desire. The desire is that I merge into the Brahman effulgence and I become happy and peaceful and I become free of all uh, material. Uh, uh, trials and tribulation, and I live a peaceful life. So the merging into the Brahman effulgence for them is just a means to an end of their own personal desire. So that is why it is put in the same category of things like having a beautiful wife or, or a big bank, bank balance. Um, Prabhupada also in one of the lectures says, this is our challenge, that there are millions and trillions of men and women all over the world, but they are not at all intelligent. Okay. We'll read the next verse. 238. Dharma Artut 
ಉಕ್ತಂ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ತಂತು ತನ್ವ ಪಿತೃಜ ರಕ್ಷಕಾಮ ಪುಣ್ಯಜನಾನ್ ಅಜಸ್ಕಾಮ ಮರುದ್ಗನಾನ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೆರಿಡಿಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಡೈನಸ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ದ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಡೆಮಿ ಗಾಡ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಧರ್ಮ ಅರ್ಥ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಅರ್ಥ ಸೊ ಧರ್ಮ ಅರ್ಥ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಸೈರಿಂಗ್ ರಿಲಿಜಿಯಾಸಿಟಿ ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ನೋ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಧರ್ಮ ಅರ್ಥ ಕಾಮ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಸೊ ಧರ್ಮ ಅರ್ಥ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ರೈಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ವೇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಇನ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಸೊ ಅರ್ಥ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಫೈಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಧರ್ಮ ದಟ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಇನ್ ರಿಲಿಜಿಯಾಸಿಟಿ it also means that one is looking for dharma and arth so one who is looking for religiosity and material gains and dharma artha uttam shlokam so uh, shri prabhupa translates uh, uttam shloka if you look at the word to word translation so uttam shlokam is the supreme lord or persons who are attached to the supreme lord which would naturally mean uh, devotees um, vishwanath chakravarti he gives a slightly different interpretation and he uses more of the second uh, meaning so in the translation prabhupad says lord vishnu or his devotee vishwanath chakravarti thakur specifically points to to um, um, the personality of dharma which means that is pointing to to yamraj over here and the reason that he says he does it is because of context because before this verse and after this verse um sukhdev goswami is talking about demigod worship and uh, in between uh, putting krishna there when he is still not when he is essentially talking to the to the materially uh, uh, materially uh, invested person is a is a break in the is a, is a break in the flow so based on that he 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 says that the person desiring religiosity dharmartha should worship the personality of of uh, of dharma um either way this is uh, um this is you know the the two understandings are are fairly congruent because ultimately the personality of dharma is a devotee of is a devotee of lord vishnu and ultimately dharma artha is the understanding of dharma artha is shuddha bhakti so shila prabhupad as we know that whenever whenever there is there is the uh, whenever there is an opportunity he he always uses it to talk about uh, shuddha bhakti here there then the verse goes on to say that the person desiring many descendants should worship the pitras and the person who is desiring uh, protection should worship punya punya janan so punya janan is uh, uh, various demigods and uh, vishnu chakravarti thakur says that uh, uh, punya janan means the yakshas then the person with strong senses or desiring strong senses this is ajay kama so why will a person desire strong senses because the senses are the way to enjoy right if somebody has weak digestion he cannot enjoy good food if a person is not able to 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 hear properly he cannot enjoy good music so that is why some people they desire strong senses ajakama and for that marud gana worship of the of the maruds so prabhupada in the in the purport says there are such different classes of worshipers of different demigods may ultimately reach the respective planets of those demigods within the universe but he who reaches the spiritual planets in the brahma jyoti achieves the highest perfection 
ओके नेक्स्ट वर्स टू थ्री नाइन राज काम मनु देवा नृत्यम चरण यजे काम काम यजे सोमम अकाम पुरुषम परम वन हु डिजाइन्स डोमिनेशन ओवर अ किंगडम और एन एम्पायर शुड वर्शिप द मनुस वन हु डिजाइन्स विक्ट्री ओवर एन एनिमी शुड वर्शिप द डीमंस एंड वन हु डिजाइन्स सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन शुड वर्शिप द मून बट वन हु डिजाइन्स नथिंग ऑफ मटेरियल एन्जॉयमेंट should worship the supreme personality of god so now sukhdev goswami is is uh, taking us or parishad maharaj to the fourth in the in the in the in the road so he says rajya uh, rajya kama so uh, so so rajya kama it appears twice it appears in the verse 4 also same phrase rajya kama and it verse it's appearing in verse 9 also but there is a slight difference that uh, uh, rajya kama means desiring to be a king and in verse 4 where rajya kama is appearing it means desiring a kingdom so they are close but not not exactly the not exactly the the same one cannot be a king without a kingdom but one can be a king of a small kingdom and one would can desire to be have a large kingdom so here rajakama means desiring to be a king and in 2 3 4 rajakama is desiring a kingdom so uh, um, so again for different material desires like for desiring a one who desires to be a king should worship the manus because manus are ultimately the administrators of the of the of the universe then one who desires victory over the enemy should worship the the demons because they are in the mode of passion not because the demons always have victory over the enemy in fact it's the opposite most of the time they lose from the from the devas but they have a lot of qualities that are that are uh, very relevant to uh, engaging with enemy very strongly passionate they have a lot of faith in their own strength they have faith in the material energy they they they, they do all kinds of uh, of uh, worship Like the demons are considered to be more experts at karma kanda than the devas are, and that's why they are able to to get all that power. That's why the devas have to take shelter of Lord Vishnu. So, having mentioned the activities of the foolish people, Sukhdev Goswami now talks about the in the last line he talks about the activities of the intelligent person, the person who is full of material desires. will worship the devas and the persons who are looking to destroy the material desires will worship purusham param so when the word purusham param is used there is no ambiguity about it because param means the greatest so there can be only one person who is the greatest and that is the supreme personality of god So Prabhupada says the conclusion is that one must minimize the desire for material enjoyment, and for this one should worship the supreme personality of God, and who is described here as Param or beyond anything material. Sri Pa Shankaracharya has also stated Narayano Paro Avekta, the supreme Lord is beyond the material and circumstance. In one of his lectures, Sri Prabhupada says, therefore it is said Akam. if you have completely become free from all material desires or if you want that position then come to krishna no other demigod if you actually want freedom from this material bondage then krishna okay so let me pause over here and see if there is any questions or comments
If not, then we'll continue with verse 10. This is a famous verse that is uh, quoted very often and also a verse that I would recommend that you memorize. 2, 3, 10. Akama sarva kamova moksha kamu dharadi tivrena bhakti yogena yajate purusham param. A person who has broader intelligence, intelligence, whether he is full of material desires, without any material desires, or desiring liberation, must by all means worship the supreme whole, the personality of Godhead. So from the previous set of verses, it would appear that Sukadev Goswami is recommending that uh, uh, those who have material desires, they worship the devas. Those who desire liberation should worship Lord Brahma. And only those who are without material desires are qualified to worship Krishna. Now, what he is clarifying over here is that this is not what he is saying. So, what he is saying is the people in this position will have a tendency to worship demigods, people with material desires. But actually, everyone should worship Krishna. Kama Sarva Kama, Moksha Kama Dharati. Whether the person is without material desires, Sarva Kama, whether he is full of desires, Moksha Kama, or whether he is desiring, desiring a liberation. That Tivrena Bhakti Yogena Yajate Purusham Param. That uh, uh, in order to quickly make advancements in one's uh, devotional service, one should worship Krishna. So, <clears throat> so this verse is is a this this verse is a verse that needs to be understood in context. So. Sukhde Goswami is not making the point that uh, if one has material desires, then one should go to Krishna. Uh, I'm sorry, the other way around. He's not making the point that uh, uh, in order to satisfy one's material desires, one should go to Krishna. But he is saying that if one has material desires, then also it is okay to go to Krishna. So there's a difference between the between the two. So he is not he is not promoting uh, devotional service for material desires, but he is promoting devotional service even if there are material desires. So this is him casting a wider net. So in the previous set of verses, he had said, if you have material desires, worship these demigods. And they will give you the, they will give you the, the results. Now, um, you put yourself in the position of a person with a lot of material desires, and he says, "Okay, I want good health, I want wealth, I want long life, I want a good wife, I want progeny, no harm in me, having a good kingdom." And then I have, I already have a list of seven or eight demigods to worship. Each demigod worship is a very elaborate process. So the person is already becoming overwhelmed. Now Sukhde Goswami is putting himself strategically at this point is saying that instead of worshipping these seven eight demigods, worship Krishna. Now he's not giving them wrong information. Because if you approach Krishna with material desires, Krishna will fulfill your material desires. So he's not misleading them. But the reason that he is leading them towards Krishna is that when they worship Krishna with material desires, Krishna will purify the material desires. And then the, the, the Sarva Kama becomes a Kama. So, uh, as I mentioned, he talks about three kinds of people. He talks about the Sarva Kami, which are the Karmis. And he talks about the Akam. Or the devotees, and then he talks about the the moksha karmis. So essentially, he's talking about the karmis, the gyanis, and the bhaktas. The karmis are are full of material desires, 
those who desire liberation, the impersonal, they are jnanis. And then they are those who are devoid of material desires, they are the bhaktas. So the point is making is whether you are pursuing the path of karma or jnana or bhakta, you should approach Krishna. Because Krishna will do both. He will full, he will give you what you he will give you what you want, but he will also give you what you need. On the other hand, the devas they will only give you what you want. So you approach a demigod, you worship him properly, and say that may I have a long life, and the demigod will will bless you with a long life. But Krishna, he will not only bless you with a long life, he will also bless you with eventual material detachment and spiritual attachment. Um, Sridhar Swami, when he comments on this verse, he, uh, uh, he, uh, he justifies Akama as being a pure devotee. Because in the purest way, uh, an akam could also be a could also be a jnani, because the jnanis are one who have given up all material desires. But uh, Sridhar Swami um, uh, he 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 makes this distinction by saying that akam actually means a pure devotee, which is how Sridhar Prabhupada also he also interprets it, and then. Uh, uh, Yajata Purusha Param. So he makes the point that one should not consider Purush to point to the to the uh, super soul or to Paramatma. That is a general concept. That is a general interpretation of Purush. It's the Purush Avatar, right? Krishna's Purush Avatars. And especially when you're in the context of the material world, Purush typically talks about um, Lord Vishnu as Paramatma. But Sridhar Swami makes the point that um, the Purush over here is the Supreme Personality of the Godhead, not the Super Soul, because the Supreme Person is worshipped by advanced souls desiring liberation. Souls become fit to enter the spiritual planet beyond the jurisdiction of the Super Soul. So the point he's making is that. Uh, uh, Sukhdev Goswami has already given the has has also has already given the moksha kamudharadi. So the moksha kamudharadi are the ones who are who are who are talking about transcending the material world. But when you when and then he separately talks about purusham param. So it means that he is talking about a about a level that is higher than the than the Brahma Jyoti which is the realm of the spiritual planet. Um, Jiva Goswami, he has an interesting uh, uh, take on the word Akama. Huh? So uh, Kama means desires. And depending on how you read the word A, so A generally is a negation, which means no desires. But uh, 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 what uh, what Jiva Goswami says is that that it can also be read as akama, which means that a long a, which is a double negation, which means that intense desires. So uh, so based on that, he says that akama actually points to a devotee who has intense desires to serve the Lord. And uh, Vishwanath Chak Chakravati Thakur, he gives a very sweet explanation to, to this word Akama. So he says that of the letters, I am the letter A. So this is Krishna in, in chapter 10 of Bhagavad Gita, verse 33. When, when that A, so this is A that is Krishna, is added to Kama, desire, the result is a kama, which is Krishna kama, which is the desire to, to, to please Krishna. 
If we lack the desire to please Krishna, we will be Sarvakama, which is filled with material desires. The word Sarvakama is therefore all desires and our Kama is Krishna desires. <clears throat> so, um, not much difference. I think the, 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 the Acharyas are just, uh, um, you know, they're, they're just enjoying the, uh, the depth of the, of the verse. As I mentioned, this is a very powerful verse, very often quoted and heavily commented upon. There are Acharyas who have spoken at length about this, about this verse. So you can expect that Acharyas, they distill and extract uh, more transcendental nectar from, uh, from the words. So Moksha Kama is specifically mentioned here um, to, to dispel the notion that the Jnanis and the Yogis are free of desires. So sometimes when it is mentioned that the Jnanis and the Yogis have no material desires and therefore they are a Kama, so Sukhdev Goswami is negating that and saying that they are not a Kama, they are Moksha Kama. And um, in, the, in, in the nectar of devotion, one of the symptoms of Bhakti is, 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 uh, 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 is Lagu Moksha Krita. So, which is that uh, this desire for liberation becomes lagu, it becomes minimized. So, uh, even though bhakti has desires, but because the desires are centered around Krishna, they are not considered to be desires. They are considered to be services. So, that is why such a person becomes moksha, moksha akrat, Lagu Mokshakrat, that his desire for liberation is, uh, is uh, minimized. And uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti, he actually says that those who are Moksha Kama, they have stronger desires than those who are Sarva Kama. Because the people who have Sarva Kama, they have small desires. They have desires like, I want some more money, I want some more years in my life, the people who are moksha kama, they have, they have bigger aspirations. They have loftier uh, visions. And uh, they, they work, they have to work much more harder. And they are much more, they are much more vested into, into this. So Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he quotes the, the, uh, the Vishnu Puran as a way to glorify the Akam, the Akam Akrata, the people who are, who are desiring liberation. So in the Vishnu Puran, he says, it is said that wherever I may wander, O Master, amongst thousands of species of life, in each situation, may I have firmly fixed devotion to you, O oh, Achyuta, may I have firm devotion to you in whatever birth I take, allocated by my karmas. Um, Srila Prabhupada, uh, actually, he talks about this. Uh, well, in one, and in his purport in 1, 9, 1916. And his disciples also talk about it in the purport of 1073, 1073-15. So I'll briefly read the purports. So Prabhupada says that Akam is one who has no material desire. Desireless means, therefore, not to be inert like the stone, but to be conscious of one's actual position and thus desire satisfaction only for the Supreme Lord. Srila Jiva Goswami has explained this desirelessness as Bhajanya Param Purusha Sukha Matraswa Sukham in the Sandarbha. This means that one should feel happy only when experiencing the happiness of the Supreme Lord. 
such superb feelings were exhibited by the damsels of Rajabhumi for the happiness of the Lord. The gopis loved the Lord, loved the Lord without any return. And this is the perfect exhibition of a karma spirit. Karma spirit or the desire for one's own satisfaction is fully exhibited in the material world, whereas the spirit of a karma is fully exhibited in the spiritual world. Then Srila Prabhupada also says that Udharadi means that one who has a broader outlook. People with desires for material enjoyment worship small demigods, and such intelligence is condemned in the Bhagavad Gita 720 as Hitgyana, the intelligence of one who has lost the senses. One cannot obtain any result from demigods without getting sanction from the Supreme Lord. Therefore, a person with a broader outlook can see that the ultimate authority is the Lord even for material benefit. Under the circumstances, one with a broader outlook, even with the desire for material enjoyment or for liberation, should take to the worship of the Lord directly. And everywhere, whether it is Akam or Sakam or Moksha Kam, should worship the Lord with great expedience. This implies that Bhakti Yoga may be perfectly administered without any mixture of karma and gyan. As the unmixed yoga of hearing and chanting may be performed by one and all. Inner heart in the context of people who are, are Sarvakamis or people who are Moksha Kamis. So he's giving the example of the of the sun ray, that the sun will purify everything, whether it is a contaminated piece or whether it is a purified piece. So the process of Bhakti Yoga is so potent that even if one takes to it full of material desires, the potency of the process will purify. In one of the lectures, Srila Prabhupada says, Sarva Kama Moksha Kama, you are all rascals. Therefore, Vyasadeva is advising, all right, even though you are rascals, you are full, full of becoming one with the Supreme. Okay. So, so let me stop here quickly and see if there's any questions or comments. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. You mentioned that the super soul in a spiritual world is beyond the jurisdiction of uh, a super soul. Uh, but those uh, living entities who can see super soul in all the living entities like uh, Vijayavinaya Sampanna, like uh, uh, such a persons, what would be their destination? Because if super soul cannot promote them to uh, a living entity to spiritual world, uh, so what would be uh, uh, the benefit of uh, seeing such seeing? So worship of the so worship of Krishna as super soul, it as in everything, it depends on 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 the mood of the devotee. Uh, the yogis who meditate on the super soul, they can have material destinations, completely material destination, because they are worshiping the super soul for the siddhis. They can be elevated to. Uh, like the higher planets, they can get elevated to Tapalok or Janalok or Brahmalok, which is again a material destination. Um, or if they have this desire to merge, then they can they can get uh, elevated into the uh, the impersonal Brahma Jyoti there. But then there are also those who worship the super, the super soul as an expansion of Krishna. And they are promoted to the spiritual world. So in the context over here, because there is the distinction that is made, Akama Sarva Kama Vi, Moksha Kama Udharadi. So 
the, it's so these are people who are who are who are uh, desiring uh, material liberation so so you know like we discussed that there are two aspects there is material attachment and spiritual attachment and for one to make full advancement one has to have both the conceptions one has to develop detachment and one has to develop attachment to krishna but uh, moksha kamudaridi the focus more is detachment that because they have developed um, for whatever reasons antipathy towards the material world they're tired of the kleshas they're tired of the repeated cycle of birth and death they're they're hankering for peace so they're moksha kamis uh, there they're not necessarily a kamis they're not necessarily situating themselves in position to worship krishna Thank you, Prof. Okay, if there are no more questions, we'll go to verse 11. Etama neja yajata ma iha neha shreya sodhyaha bhagvatiya chalo bhavo yad bhagvatah sangataha all the different kinds of worshippers of multi demigods can attain the highest perfectional benediction which is spontaneous attraction unflinchingly fixed upon the supreme personality of godhead only by the association of the pure devotee of the lord so sukadev goswami he is now beginning the conclusion of this set of instructions by pointing out that those who are interested in satisfying their desires, they come towards Krishna's devotional service. So, so he first he had addressed those who had material desires by saying that they should worship the demigods. Then he transcended by saying that even this material desires can be attained by worshipping Krishna. Then he transcends that by saying that even higher than that, the highest perfectional benediction. And then he qualifies that. He says, what is the highest perfection benediction? Spontaneous attraction, unflinchingly fixed upon the supreme personality of God. And in this verse, he also gives a very important clue. So he has reached the point where he has established the process of bhakti as the as as the potent path for everybody. Akam, Sarvakam, Mokshakam, everybody is given the process of bhakti. But one may say that okay you are given the process of bhakti how do i take to the process of bhakti so he said yad bhagavata sangata so he said that this can be achieved by the association of devotees so Sri Prabhupada says only by the association of the pure devotees of the of the lord um Shridhar swami in the commentary to this verse, he says that Sukadev Goswami explains how the previously described worshippers of the many demigods can attain devotional service. The worshippers Yatam of Indra and the other demigods in the course of the worship, Iha, can by associating with devotees Sangata of the Lord Bhagavad attain Achala Bhava Bhagwati. So Achala Bhava Bhagwati is unflinching devotion for the Lord. And in, in this way, Udaya Nihashrayasya, the Supreme Lord is, is, the Supreme Goal of the life is attained. All other things are insignificant in, 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 uh, in comparison. So, um, <clears throat> 
so the conclusion, so Srila Prabhupada points out that the conclusion is that the actual problems of life, the problem of Janma Karma, Jara Vyadi, birth, death, old age and disease, remain unre unresolved unless one takes to the process of Bhakti. And then he says that only by the grace of the divine personalities, the pure devotees of the Lord, one can achieve pure devotion, which is the highest perfection of human life. Only a pure devotee of the Lord can show one the right way of progressive life. Same point is made by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita in chapter 9, worship 23-24. Uh, uh, where he says that worshipping the demigod for material gains is not the cause of development of bhakti to the Lord, but association of the devotees is the only method. Exactly the same point is made in the, in the, in the Bhagavad Gita. So Prabhupada concludes by saying that unless the gross materialist or worshippers of the temporary demigods come in contact with the transcendentalist, like a pure devotee of the Lord, of the Lord, their attempts are simply a waste of energy. By the grace of the divine personalities, the pure devotees of the Lord, one can achieve pure devotion, which is the highest perfection of human life. So, so, so this Bhagavad Sangha is important for many reasons. So, one reason is that only one who has bhakti can give bhakti. So, after reaching, reading the previous set of verses, and remember, Sukhdev Goswami is talking about all kinds of people. He's not talking about just the devotees. So, so, so let us assume that a person who desires strong material gains, and he says, okay, I'm convinced. Rather than me worshipping so many devas, I will worship, I will worship Krishna. How do I worship? You, uh, the, such people are very result oriented. So Sukhdev Goswami says Bhagavad Sangha that you associate with the with the devotees. So this association will give them two things. It will start them on the path of bhakti and by associating with those who have no material desires, the person will himself lose material desires. Same thing for those who are desiring liberation. That when they see that the people who are giving them the path to liberation themselves consider liberation to be insignificant. It's like that pastime of, uh, uh, I think it is Sanatan Goswami, that uh, he was approached once by a person saying that I heard that you have uh, Paris money which you can touch bell metal and make it gold. And Sanatana Goswami said, yes, I have it. And he said, he, the man said, can you give it to me? He said, yes, I can give it to you. And then he said, okay, give it to me. Sanatana Goswami, you see that, you see that heap of rubbish over there? The Paras money is over there. So he happily takes the Paras money, goes back. And on his way, he's heading back. And because this person is very, is, is very materialistic. And the desires of a materialistic person is that once they get 10 rupees, they want 20 rupees. Once they have 20 rupees, they want 100 rupees. So he says that this person so easily gave away this, this uh, incredibly valuable gift, which means that he's keeping with him something that is even more valuable. So he turned back and he went to Sanatana Goswami. And uh, he said that you obviously have something that is a lot more Precious than this, than this gem. So, can you give that to me? Sadhguru Goswami, yes. But one condition that you throw this in the in the river. So the man did not hesitate. He was so much driven by desire for material gains. He had seen that Sanatan Goswami was a man of his words. That initially, when he had said Parasmani, he said yes. So he was very much convinced that Sanatan Goswami will give him what he what he is asking, which is more precious. So he threw the money into the water and then Sanatana Goswami began to instruct him on the process of bhakti. 
and he ended up becoming a great devotee. So this pastime is essentially an embodiment of this flow of the verses. That one with material desires, when they approach devotees, then not only is the material desire fulfilled, but they are, they are purified of the material desires. Okay, next verse, 2, 3, 12. Jnanam yad apratin vrita gunon me chakram atma prasaduta yatra guneshva sangaha kevalya samata pathastvatha bhakti yogaha ko nivrta hari katha suratim na kurya Transcendental knowledge in relation with the Supreme Lord Hari is knowledge resulting in the complete suspension of the waves and whirlpools of the material modes. Such knowledge is self-satisfying due to its being free from material attachment and being transcendental, it is approved by authorities. Who could fail to be attracted? So this is a verse that actually summarizes the process of devotional service. Again, it's a verse that is commented on, quoted quite a bit, because it succinctly surprises the process of, of uh, bhakti. So here, in this context, it is showing uh, uh, the progression of those who are worshippers of Brahman and those who are pursuing the Jnana. So, so the result of Jnana is Vairagya. And because of that, one becomes situated in a state of material detachment. A person who is situated in this, in this, in this state of material detachment, when gets the association of a devotee, quickly develops spiritual attachment. So one may question that what may happen if there is no devotee association, that a person is pursuing the path of vairagya, jnana vairagya, he has developed detachment, but then there is no devotee uh, attachment, or there is no devotee association. So Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says that, that this is a hypothetical question or a hypothetical situation that actually never happens. So he explains that mercy is spontaneous and it is bound to happen sooner or later. So if a person is genuinely desiring to make devotional adv advancement, then inevitably the mercy will be there. So he gives the example of two prominent impersonalists who took to the process of bhakti. So one is Sanakadi, the four Kumaras. They directly received the mercy of, of, of uh, Lord Vishnu and uh, also received the mercy of Tusi Devi and that thereby they attained bhakti. And the second example that is given is that of Sukhdev Goswami that by the mercy of Srila Vyasadeva and his disciples, he attained bhakti through, through Shavan Kirtan. So the verse first thing talks about is that when one is ready and desiring bhakti, bhakti is inevitably going to happen. So many times we have this discussion that bhakti can only be received through a bhakti. And then one may question that what if I don't get the association of a devotee? So this verse is saying is that 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 question is hypothetical. It's not a factual question. And when a person is desiring bhakti, then inevitably the the person will get the association of a devotee. And if you flip it around, we can also understand that this is from our own lives. The fact that we have received the association of a devotee means that we had the desire to make 
devotional service. So many times what we, we say that when we ask, what to, why did you take to Krishna consciousness? And inevitably, the starting point is, is Vaishnav Sangha. That somehow, some, somewhere, there was, there was the association of a devotee. And it's a, it's, it, it is a logical point because, yes, devotion did start. But as per this verse, uh, Vaishnav Sangha is the result of is the result of a desire to make devotional service. Because um, otherwise it would become too, uh, what's the right word? It would become, um, it would become too random. One, deserve, one, one somehow went to some place, got the association of a devotee and became a, became a, a devotee. So considering the fact that bhakti is an exalted platform, uh, anchoring it on just random acts, it kind of mitigates its efficacy. That just randomly, because of some unknown circumstances, one gets association of a devotee and takes to bhakti and then attains perfection. So what the verse is saying is that there has to be desire. And in fact, the verse goes a little bit further and says that the desire is the result of Jnana Vairagya. Now, in our lives, we probably don't see that much of Jnana Vairagya, or maybe there was Jnana Vairagya in previous lives. But in this verse, at least it is said that as a result of Jnana Vairagya, one who has desire to, 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 to make spiritual advancement will get the association of devotees. The verse then talks about the superiority of Bhakti to Karma Jnana and yoga and a demigod worship All right so so if you look at the verse it says that uh, uh, the no, uh, it results in the complete suspension of the waves and whirlpools of the material modes such knowledge is self satisfying because it is free from material attachments and being transcendental is approved by the by the authorities so so uh, the verse is talking about the superiority of bhakti to karma, jnana, yoga, and demigod worship. So a person who is absorbed in the, in the happiness of bhakti, uh, nirvita, he develops attachment, ratim. So the meaning is that the person without this attachment to Krishna, will not experience real happiness. So whatever they aim to achieve in this secondary process is also available in bhakti. And conversely speaking, that for all these processes, the highest result, which is prema, is attained by bhakti only. So what does this mean? that everything that these processes offer is offered in bhakti, but what is offered in bhakti is not offered in these processes. So bhakti is the, is, is, is the, uh, is the mature culmination of, uh, of these processes. Now, pure bhakti, which disregards karma and kyan and remembering the Lord is the recommended method to produce to produce prema. So Prabhupada says in the purport the state of there is a complete self-satisfaction without any material connection. So thus, this verse, it clearly delineates five things. Karma, Jnana, Yoga, Bhakti, and Prema. So in the purport, Srila Prabhupada, he elaborates that Bhakti is so potent that even in an immature state, it begins to yield the highest result of 
transcendental bliss. So what does he say? Prabhupada says that this transcendental bliss is experienced even in the stage of sadhana avastha, which is devotional practice, if properly undertaken under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master. And in the mature state, the developed transcendental feeling culminates in realization of a particular realize, a relationship with the Lord by which the living is originally constant Lord, which is estimated to be the highest transcendental bliss. So immature stage of uh, bhakti, there is transcendental bliss that is experienced. In the mature state, he says the highest transcendental bliss, and he describes that as as being um, as having being being re-established in your spiritual position with respect to Krishna in the rasa that is that is your constitutional position. Then Prabhupada goes on to say. The bhakti yoga being the only means of God realization is called Kevalya, exclusive. Srila Jiva Goswami quotes the Vedic version, Eko Narayana Deva Paravarnam Paramastu Kevalya Samjita. In this connection, and established that Narayana, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is known as Kevalya, and the means by which one which approaches the Lord is called Kevalya Pantha, or the means for attaining the Godhead. This Kevalya Pant Pant begins from Shravana or hearing those topics that relate to the personality of the Godhead and the natural consequence of hearing Sri Krishna Katha is attaining of transcendental knowledge which causes detachment from all mundane topics for which the devotee has no taste. So Sukhdev Goswami also makes the point that it is approved by authorities. So, uh, because he is stating something that is that is so exalted, he is uh, uh, he is re-establishing. So this is the last verse that Sukadev Goswami speaks in this chapter, uh, delineating the process of bhakti. So if you remember, he started off by establishing the fact that he is speaking based on the disciplic succession. He ends, at least in this chapter, by once again. Uh, restating that it is approved by authority, which means that he's speaking as per the as per the parampara. He's establishing the universal the universality of it. He says, "Who could fail to be attracted?" Now, this this who could fail to be attracted actually acts as a button to to Shonaka Rishi, where he talks about a lot of people who are so degraded that they actually do fail to be attracted. But uh, it does not take away the statement that, that is being made. The, the point that will emerge is that who in the right mind could, be fail, could fail to be attracted. If one is demented, if one is, one is mad, then one's actions are not representative of the normal behavior. But a person who is normal, who is sincere, who is looking uh, to make real advancements, will naturally be attracted to that one does not have to rely on that also means that another name of Atma is Krishna that it is satisfying because it is connected to the real self, which is Krishna. In, the, in, in a lecture on this verse, Prabhupada says that we have come to enjoy this ocean of material nishayans, and there is tossing, and we are thinking we are enjoying. So when, comes, when one comes to the knowledge that this is not my platform of enjoyment, let me go to the land, then he is safe. Okay, so I'll end over here a little bit over time, but I wanted to finish the set of verses by uh, Suk uh, Sukhdev Goswami. The next set of verses are all by um, Shanakarishi, which we will 
which we will do in the next verse. Any any questions or comments? Okay. If not, we'll end over here. Thank you very much.